I always say, if you don't deal with fear, it will deal with you. There's not enough deadbolts you can buy in the world to stop fear. Fear is not part of the kingdom of God. It is not part of your future. It is a lie. You don't have to be afraid because God is with you. Light always wins over darkness, and you are not of the kingdom of darkness. You're of the kingdom of light. Today's message, Faith Over Fear. You've got to stop thinking and saying what fear says and start saying what God says about your situation. I've read the scripture several times over the last few weeks, and I want to read it again. You should probably rehearse it over and over, Luke 10, 17. The 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. He replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power, all the power of the enemy, and nothing. What does nothing mean to you? What's your definition of the word nothing? Nothing. One version says, nothing by any means shall harm you. Friend, if you have that kind of authority and that protection, what do you have to fear? The Bible says, what do we have to fear? Fear is absent in the kingdom. It is not part of kingdom life. It is not part of your life. It is not true. The Bible says you can't. Trample on snakes and scorpions, right? That means you're going forward. Fear tries to hinder you from moving anywhere, right? Fear says you stop or probably back up, but you trample on snakes and scorpions, which indicates you move right on and Satan has no authority, but you're moving. You're moving forward, right? So when I had this paralysis, I went to the doctor and they began to test and it was a bunch of mess. They gave me all kind of futuristic prophecies. And they said, you got to cut this out of your diet. Your body's all whacked out. You got to restrict. You got to change how you live. Confine limitations. What we do is we agree with it. Well, I guess I could live without that. I mean, I guess it's better than die. I guess I'll take that one. I guess I'll, okay, I'll, I'll confine myself. I'll restrict. I'll, okay, I'll agree to that. I got to the place I was afraid to leave my house. I was a prisoner in my own body. Listen, I'll put it real plain. Fear is hell on earth. The Bible says with fear there's torment. And friend, you have been delivered from fear. But we began to make concessions. And Drenda wisely said one day, going through all this stuff, you got to do this, you can't do this, you can't do this, you can't do this. She says, do you want to live this way? I said, no. Well, she just took the medicine. She goes, fine. She threw it in the toilet and flushed down. It. <laughs> Everyone say, thank God for a godly wife. <laughs> Amen. And, you know, so I had to learn. Listen, you can't win. You will never win making concessions with fear. I've told this story a million times. I'll tell you again because it's a good illustration that going to the dentist one day, you know, he hit the nerve. Just put the Novocaine in, hit, my face went numb instantly, like a flash. Boom. It was no dentist in this church, so if you're thinking of someone's name, no. We have several dentists here, so I don't want you to think, you know. But anyway, so I said to the dentist, I said, my face just went instantly numb. He said, what's the deal with that? He said, well, I hit the nerve. Okay. You're kind of waiting to, you know. I, what next? He said, well, you know, in about 80% of the time, it'll heal up. Okay. I've told you before, you know, I did some foolish things. I went to a friend's house and told him what happened. They said, oh, my God. My uncle's face is paralyzed. The dentist hit his nerve. His, he's paralyzed for life. This is a true story. I went down the street, talked to someone else. This is, I have never in my life heard of anyone being paralyzed with a dentist. I've never, ever. But the first person I went to after that happened said their uncle had a paralyzed face. So I thought, this is, much, this is, surely I've never heard this before. I'm going to ask someone else. The second person I asked said, oh, my aunt's paralyzed. Same thing. I was like, i got to stop asking. <laughs> and you need to stop asking. Because they don't have any authority. I need to find out what Jesus says about this. Anyway, so that night, I couldn't sleep, you know, insomnia. 
I'm not going to ask how many have fear-based insomnia, but fear, problems, issues keep you awake at night, right? And so you got to learn how to handle that stuff. But I was laying there. My dad had Bell's palsy a couple years earlier. You know, Bell's palsy, you got this nerve that goes to your face right below your ear. And apparently it can get inflammation, cut that nerve off, and your whole side of your face stops working. My dad, he couldn't close his mouth. He couldn't close his eyes. His whole face drooped. And this little voice that night, you have a little twins here, right? Bell's palsy. Oh, well, sure enough, I, yeah, I do feel a little twinge there. Yeah, maybe. I woke up with full-blown Bell's palsy. I woke up with Bell's palsy. Couldn't close my mouth. Couldn't close my eyes. I went to the doctor. I said, doctor, he checked me out. He goes, yep, you got a full-blown case of Bell's palsy. What? Well, he said, well, about 80% of the time it heals up. 20% have permanent paralysis. I wasn't going to ask anyone else, and I wasn't going to ask another doctor. I knew my problem was not my problem. My problem was I didn't have faith. My problem is I need to find out what Jesus says about this. I'm not going farther down that road. I'm not making concessions. Anyway, by taking the word of God, Drain had planted scriptures all over the house. And uh, this was one of them. Isaiah 53, 4 through 5. Surely he took, us, uh, took up our pains and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds we are healed. Or by his stripes we have been healed. And I read that. I'd read these scriptures walking through the house for about three or four days. And then one day walking down the hall, glancing at this scripture card again, all of a sudden, bam, the anointing of God hit me. And instantly I knew I was free. The fear yakking stopped. Within an hour or so, my face was completely normal and I was completely healed. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. But you have to know how to handle that. And fear will try to tell you to make concessions and back up. You're not, you can't and won't. And it's trying to box you in a corner and you can't, you can't do that. You've got to stop that because it's all a lie. Second Timothy chapter one, seven, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Now, through this series, we're going to talk to you how to get free from fear, how to overcome fear, how to deal with fear. We're going to cover that. But right now, I'm trying to lay a groundwork that, you know what, fear has pushed you in a corner. You're bigger than you think you are. Did you know that? Your potential is greater than you think you are. You can be doing great things because God is in you. And fear tries to tell you that you're incapable, that you're not lovely, you're, you know, you're, you're an idiot. You're a, you know, he's going to start naming all these adjectives about your life which don't match up what Jesus says about you. <laughs> 